Wow, it is another hot as hell day here in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm lucky to be here, but it is very hot. Today, I want to go see a temple or two. Don't really have anything on the agenda. Had a couple of temples in mind, but we'll kind of just see where the day takes us. I originally planned to film this entire video on my action camera, the Insta360 GO 2, but for some reason, the camera just decided to break out of nowhere. I thought it overheated at first, but it won't even turn on anymore, which is really disappointing. I wish I could recommend the camera, but at this point, I'm getting kind of frustrated. I always find fast food restaurants at different countries pretty fascinating because their menus are always different. And that McDonald's was pretty tame. They had on their menu like a a rice dish and McDonald's and rice are just two things that don't really go hand in hand, at least in my opinion. But yesterday at the mall, I saw um, a Burger King that had the most popping off tea menu. I'm talking about the bubble teas, the fruit teas, they had everything. And it was a Burger King. I got to check out KFC, I saw a Taco Bell. You know, you never know what you're going to find. Maybe I'll be open-minded and order a rice curry from McDonald's or something. I don't know. First things first, I gotta find a taxi to get me to the temple, which has actually been kind of a difficult task in this town. There's not really a whole lot of taxis, there's a lot of motorbikes, but Bangkok is known to be, I think it's like the most deadliest city for vehicle accidents, and I'm really not in the mood to get into an accident, especially on a motorbike, so, so I'm gonna try to find a car and then head off to a temple. So the temple we just arrived to is called Wat Saket, and it's the only temple built on, I guess, the only hill in Thailand. The catch is, is that it's an artificial hill, so it's not even a real hill. But it should have a pretty good view, according to the internet. One thing I have to say about this city is that it's absolutely chaotic. It's crazy, it's electrifying, it's, it just has a certain energy that I think attracts a lot of people here to Bangkok. But one thing that I don't like about it is the traffic. I mean, there's just so much going on everywhere, all at once, at every time of the day. And the traffic really reflects that. Just getting from one point in the city to another is incredibly difficult. And most neighborhoods are extremely walkable, you can get around, but if you have to go to a different side of the city, good luck. It's gonna take you probably 30 minutes. Just going one and a half miles, maybe not even that far, it took me about 35 minutes in that taxi. Hello. Are you selling like sarongs? Yeah, we do. Do you have one that looks good for guys? <laughs> Many feta. Wow. I kind of like this one. Yeah. So to get to the top of this temple, apparently you have to hike 344 steps and I have no idea how much that is, but the steps are really tiny, so I think it'll be fine. So typically, you respect the culture of the temple by covering up you know, shoulders, ankles, kneecaps, things like that. Um, I mean, do you have to? I, I mean, maybe not, but... I went ahead and bought a sarong from the shop over there for 150 baht because I figured might as well respect the culture and cover up. And I chose this really pretty blue pattern uh, made of elephants actually in honor of going to see elephants later this week in Chiang Mai. I would say it's really peaceful except for this guy, this guy talking through the speaker here talking the whole way up because if he wasn't talking it'd be super peaceful oh wow look at this view already wow you can see everything from up here you can see the entire skyline from this hill this hill 
wow, this is really something special. I had pretty much zero expectations coming to this thing, but it's far exceeded my expectations. I'm really, really impressed. It's so beautiful. And apparently it's the highest temple in all of Bangkok. And I don't doubt it. We are pretty far up here. So this temple has quite an interesting history. I was reading on the way up here, um, no one really knows exactly when this temple was built, but it's been renovated many times throughout the past several hundred years. What I thought was particularly interesting about this temple, I think it was like the 1800s approximately, the Siamese who were here, they did not believe in cremating their dead within city walls. And this temple was located just outside of city walls, so they would a lot of times bring the dead bodies here to be cremated. So what happened was is there was disease outbreaks and it spread throughout the villages and it would kill upwards of 300 people per day. And so they weren't able to cremate all the dead bodies that arrived here. So a lot of dead bodies were just left out to rot and vultures would come to the temple and actually feed on these dead bodies and that became the vultures main food source. Vultures have kind of been associated with this temple in a very eerie way. If I see a vulture here, I'm going home immediately. So if it isn't obvious, this hill is not actually a real hill. I think I mentioned this earlier, but there used to be a temple here long before this one that collapsed. And they built on top of that one um, over the years and through the renovations, it kind of became a na uh, not natural, but man-made hill. It's really neat. It's considered to be the only hill in Bangkok. The only hill. Those are the vultures I was talking about earlier. A grim reminder of what used to happen here every single day. Thankfully, no more dead bodies, but the sculptures of vultures remain. That is a very disturbing image to think about. Vultures competing to feed over dead human bodies. It's wild. In 1820, during the reign of King Rama II, cholera disease spread to Bangkok leading to more than 30,000 deaths in the capital. Vultures began coming to the temple to devour the dead bodies and the temple became the main food court for vultures. The vultures would spread their wings and compete with each other for meals, creating a gruesome scene which is remembered in the legend of the vultures of Sakret Temple that continues to be told today. I don't think the camera is doing this thing justice. This statue of Buddha is like over 20 feet tall. So I've just made it to Wat Arong, and it's a very special temple. I do not know why, um, but it's highly recommended, perhaps the most recommended, because people say it's probably the most picturesque temple in the entire city of Bangkok. And it's right on the water. Wow, it doesn't even look real. I can't believe it. I'm actually stunned. This temple is incredible. And the best part is, is it looks like you can actually climb. We'll see how far we can go up. Everyone is fighting over spots to take. Instagram photos by everyone. I mean literally everyone. I'm like trying to dodge people everywhere I step Trying not to get into their photos Have I died and gone to influencer hell? Like is this my punishment today for being here for vlogging?
And so what's really cool is behind the temple, you have all this green space that backs right up to the water. Check it out. Wow, I'm just like so grateful to be here. Not only is this temple just absolutely stunning, but the weather, you couldn't have asked for better weather today. It's clear, there's a cold wind from the river. All in all, I'd say it's pretty much a perfect travel day, which is kind of ironic because it started off bad when my camera broke. My action camera broke this morning and I almost like didn't even want to make a video today, but I'm glad I did. All right, let's get on the boat. This boat's gonna take us all the way to Chinatown. And from Chinatown, back to my hotel. Which is, Chinatown's actually on the way, so it's very convenient. 